Hey guys, this is your best friend in programming, Kodajit, and in this video, we are going to study how to create a new Blazor WebAssembly app from the scratch. We're going to see the structure of the code, how it's laid out, and we will create something that actually works, that does something. So let's get started right away. To start programming in Blazor, you need the Visual Studio. Blazor runs in Visual Studio and you can get the Visual Studio Community Edition free by just downloading it. And when you install it, you need to install the workload that's required to, to run Blazor and that is ASP.NET and Web Development. So when you install Visual Studio Installer, it's going to look like this. Make sure that you have the option ASP.NET and Web Development turned on then Visual Studio is going to have the tooling necessary to create Blazor projects. Alright, so this is Visual Studio and I will get started by clicking on create a new project and then looking for the template Blazor. So I've got, I've got uh, multiple templates over here. I've got Blazor Server App, Blazor WebAssembly App, .NET MAUI Blazor App, ASP.NET Core Web App. So Today I'm going to create a Blazor WebAssembly app. This is the version of Blazor that runs on the browser on the client side as it should. Now some people might also want to create a Blazor server app which is going to run the Blazor on the server side and it's going to communicate with the browser using SignalR and modify the browser interface but all the processing was will be done on the server side. Frankly speaking this is something that is going to cost your server a lot and unless you're making an enterprise app which is going to be used by a very few number of customers i cannot think of any reason why you would want to create a blazor server app i would definitely go for a blazor WebAssembly app and that requires a little bit extra coding i will be talking about that but this is what you need to do when you go for production applications you should never make retail apps, widespread production, widespread production apps in Blazor server technology. Always use the WebAssembly technology. Next we also have .NET MAUI Blazor app and .NET MAUI is a technology to create mobile application, desktop application. It's actually a cross-platform technology to create applications that run everywhere even on Mac OS. And when you combine it with Blazor, you get the benefit of creating a web interface, a web type of interface that works everywhere. This is fantastic and uh, I will be working on this too. I will be making tutorials on this too and I'm actually going to use this technology too soon. But meanwhile, we're going to concentrate on the web technology that is Blazor WebAssembly and create our project. So we will call this my test app. Yeah, not too complicated. Hold on. My test app and we're going to put it in a temporary location so i usually put it in project test and solution name is also my uh, my test app usually i don't like the solution and the project in the same directory because any solution that you create is going to be a collection of projects right so i want to have each project in its own directory so i'll keep that no check there and the framework you want to use is dotnet 6 that's the long-term support version it's the latest version of dotnet which unlocks the most amount of features and blazor is out of the box meant for dotnet 6 uh, with the latest iteration so definitely go for this dotnet 6 you need to configure for https because with https configuration blazor is going to run on the, on the browser in http https 2 which is cool on the server is absolutely required and then there is this this option asp.net core hosted this is very important you see blazor is a client side technology kind of like react but to make it work online you need to have some sort of communication with the server where is it going to get it going to get its data from it's not going to pick the data you know directly from a database so you need to have some kind of interface that sits between your blazor app and your web server so that is going to be your asp.net core hosted app you, so you mostly need to check that on and keep it on because that's how you're going to talk to the server that's your backend and then we have the option progressive web application progressive web application or pwa is a special kind of app 
uh, it's actually just a manifest that you add to your website that will let you create a mobile app out of your of your website of your web app which can be installed using the various stores app stores like the, you can install it from google play store uh, your application can be installed from the iphone app store if you use a if you make a pwa in this particular project we are not gonna make a pwa next we have do not use top level statements now this is a drastic change in layout if you are used to seeing namespaces at the top and using statement at the top you will see that now that's not strictly necessary c sharp does away with it and you can choose this option if you don't want to use top level statements i don't really care because i'm used to that and i like it i will still keep it in this project at least so we'll just not mark that and then you click create and our new application should go live in minutes make that second so here we have the application ready and microsoft helpfully gives you kind of a ready application which actually does something which actually works and it is divided between three different projects so you can see there is my test app client and my test app server and my test app shared so let's talk about this a little bit we already discussed that blazor is a client side technology kind of like react so it runs on the browser and this is the project that will run on the browser my test app client the client side project that will run on the browser but again it needs to communicate with the server to get its data and this is the server side project my test app server is the server side project that the client will call when it needs data or when it needs to uh, communicate something to the server maybe access the database or maybe update the database whatever is required it's going to go through the server and finally we have the test app shared and i want to just warn you a little bit this is a class this is a project that you've added in both of these projects and it's just a library so you can add this library project this assembly in both these projects client and server and any class that you create inside this project like this one will be available to both of these projects the client and the server but you cannot write any data access code in here the reason is if you write any data access code in the shared app it's not going to run whenever you try to make it work from the client side app because again only the server can access the back end not the client so from here you can definitely access all the objects you can populate the objects from the server using the back end code any code or you cannot call any function directly that's going to access the database just a what a warning out there let's go and take a look at what we already have from microsoft i'm going to just hit play it's compiling so here we have our little app it's a nice demo of what blazor can do but for this particular video we're gonna create something from scratch so we're gonna just dump all of this and start coding so i was looking for cool ideas to make and i found online an api that will predict your name predict your age based on your name so basically what you do is you call this api and you feed it your name and it's going to predict how old you are based on the kind of name you have so i checked the name cynthia and it says that the age could be something like 69 and this is a json api get api there is no authentication involved so we can code it pretty easily won't be involved in writing all the auth code and wasting time so let's just go ahead and make a cool app where you type in your name and it predicts your age all right so let's go into our client app and clean up the code a bit we have to remove the generic code that microsoft put in so first thing we're not going to use a nav menu in the project at all it's just going to be a single screen so let's remove the nav menu we're going to take a look at the main layout this is the main layout let's remove the nav menu code let's in fact remove the entire sidebar so we've got the main section and we're going to just get rid of everything over here too and just keep the body then the survey prompt goes and the counter goes fetch data goes we're not going to use any of that the index will remain and you will notice here at the top of this page there is this attribute that says page 
and then the path well routing in blazor works like this you know if you've come from the asp.net mvc world or asp.net core world you might remember routing as something you put in the programs or the startup class where it runs before the entire project runs or if you use attribute routing you decorate controller methods action methods using the attribute of the route that you want to set it up in blazor this is sort of like attribute routing because you're going to put the route in the page itself and you just use the page directive to insert the route and basically you can type in anything and blazor will try to figure out the route using what you put in you can use arguments you can use constraints the entire works the routing filters work in this routing method too so you can use any routing system you want let's just point it to home and save it let's take a look whether this runs or not all right so it's pointing to the main URL and you can see there is nothing at this address it's a 404 but if you go to home it should ideally display our page and it does so we're going to modify this so all we want to do is put in a text box and a button let people put in their name inside the text box and when they click on the button they should get the age now before i actually do this i want to explain the blazer component structure a little bit show you the different parts and tell you how it works so blazer is like i said earlier it's a hundred percent client side framework it works on the browser using WebAssembly. It will let you create C sharp code and run it in the browser just as you would modify objects using JavaScript code earlier or using frameworks like React or Vue. In Blazor, you're going to use pure C sharp code to modify all visual components of the browser. Now, if you go into the www root folder of Blazor, that is where all the static files will be, by the way your CSS files, your images, any kind of resources that your web browser page, that your web page is going to access, everything goes into the www root folder. Now, one of the files that's very important and is a part of every Blazor application, a part of the www root folder, is the index.html file. Now, this is nothing but a static file that will actually be the framework or be the root page of your entire Blazor application. So, your, so effectively, your Blazor app is going to run inside of this index.html file. I've opened it here and you can see that it's got a standard head area, head tag, where it's got things like meta character set, it's got a title, it's, it's linking to the CSS framework. In this case, it's Bootstrap. You can connect it to Bulma or any other CSS framework if you want to use something else apart from bootstrap you can create your application css file and connect it to it and then we've got another css file it's also an app css file you can you can create any sort of css files bring it over basically you can put in any standard html you want the only caveat is there should be a div with an id app that is where that's the area where the app will load in so if you want you can have the app in a box inside your web page where the rest of the web page is nothing but standard html and javascript and there is a little box a little div where the app that you've created runs or if you want of course you can take it whole screen so in this case we're going to take it whole screen there is a div with an id app that's where blazor is going to load in its application right in this div and if it is not found it's going to display this div so you need two div two two divs or two containers the first is app and the second is blazor error ui so if there is something wrong if there is an exception or blazor can't run due to some reason it's gonna show this error instead so you can define what you want to show in the uh, error component error container and if you want to fancy up the loading message a little bit you want to put in an animated gif you want to put in your custom text you want to put in some css files some css classes and make it look better you can do that too and instead of loading, you will see that exact content. So I'm not going to fancy it up quite a bit. I'm just going to change it with some text just to show that it's working. I'm, I'm going to call it conjuring and make it bold. So when you run it, instead of loading, you will see conjuring. And then there is this WebAssembly.js file. This is the file that actually has the source that loads up 
WebAssembly for you and you should never, you cannot remove it because otherwise your Blazor project will not run. Next, let's take a look at the components. Now we've trimmed away nearly every extra component out there that we could delete. And what we have here is the very basic components that you just can't get rid of. You can't go any lesser than that. So let's take a look at each component and the, in this set and understand how it works. So the first thing is app.razor. This is the main component that loads up first. That's the component Blazor WebAssembly is going to run. And you will see that in this component, what it's going to do is just specify your root data. So it's going to load up your routing component, your routing uh, code. It's done here. And then if for some reason your new root is not found, it's going to show a not found message. Again, you can put in anything you want in here. Over here, it's nothing but just a short message. Sorry, there's nothing at this address. And you can fancy it up. You can put in any standard HTML. You can link to images. You can link to GIFs and make it look flashier, make it look better. So that's all going to be doable in app.razor. Next, we have the imports.razor component. And in this file, what you do is you specify all the different classes that you want imported in every single file in this hierarchy. So what that means is you don't want to be forced to include all the basic classes that you're going to use in the code over and over. After all, who wants a series of namespaces at the top of the document every in every single file? It's kind of tiresome and irksome. And uh, Microsoft has created imports.razor so that you can put in all your namespaces in this file and any folder, any file that is similar at the same hierarchy or below it, imports.razor will be auto imported in that component file and all these namespaces will be a part of that second, that lower in hierarchy component. So in this example, imports.razor will be a part of all the shared, you know, all the components in the shared folder. It will be a part of all the components in the pages folder. So you won't have to include these namespaces in index and you won't have to include these namespaces in main layout too. So talking about main layout, this is another important component. Think of it like a containing page, like a framework where you can put in code that is common to your entire application. So you could put in your navigation bars, like there was a navigation bar just uh, 10 minutes earlier, but we deleted it. You can put in your headers, your footers, everything goes in here. All the code that is a part of every single page should go into the main layout, main layout uh, razor file. Now, one thing, think of it kind of like a shared layout page in the ASP.NET MVC world. It's a razor page with a, with, a, with a shared layout and all the pages that have this page, have this layout page as a parent will be a part of this layout itself. So how are you going to specify where the page goes? You use the body directive, at body. So wherever you put in at body, the content of the page that you're trying to load it will be replaced in place of body. So when we go to index.razor, for example, all this, play, all this code, all this uh, text, all the HTML uh, code that you've written, it will go right inside of here. All right, so you might have guessed by now, this is where we put in our code. So let's just change this a little bit. Instead of hello world, let's put in type your name and let's just make a small text box, import type. So we've got now a text box and a button. Let's see how it looks. We gotta put in our root. And now we are prompted to type our name. And if you type your name here, it's gonna tell you how old you are. So let's write the code to make it work. Since we've got a WebAssembly project over here, to get any data from the server, it's gonna make an API call to the server, make a REST call to the server. And we've got to write this code in every single place where we want to get that data from. So to do that, we need to make a HTTP call. And to make it easier for us, a Blazor project, a Blazor WebAssembly project by default will have a HTTP client object passed as a service using dependency injection to every single page in your project. In fact, every single 
uh, class that you want. You can use constructor dependency agent injection to have access to this HTTP client object. And I recommend heavily that you use this HTTP client object that's passed around as a dependency and not create an instance of HTTP client every time you need to access the backend API. The reason is creation of an object is an expensive procedure. Every time you create an object, there is a cost involved. There would be memory, there would be processor and it takes time. So your software could be very, very slow if you always create a new HTTP client object to access, uh, access the backend resources. Also, you could choke up the ports because whenever you create a new HTTP client, it does not schedule, it does not schedule the request properly and you might just cause the entire network to slow down. So it's always smarter to you have one HTTP client object and then make all your calls using this single object so that the entire network works well and your program is more responsive. Now, how are we going to use this? It's added as a scope service and there are other kind of services too. But in the context of Blazor, it actually makes no difference. No matter what service uh, type you put in, it's going to be the same. So you can use anything you want. Scoped is just fine. So let's now go into our page, use this HTTP client object to make a call to the API and get the data. To make this work, we have to write some code that will handle the button click event. And typically you can write this code right in the component itself. All you need to do is specify a code section like this. Of course, you got to call it code. Or you can create a code behind file. And personally, I prefer code behind files when it comes to components because it makes the code more organized. It puts everything in logical units. But in this particular demo, I'm not going to make a code behind. I will be writing the code right in the component. Of course, in future tutorials, as I make them, I will be showing you all these things, all these features. And I'll be talking not just about how to code things, but how to code things properly. I think it's very important to write good quality code so that you can make applications that are maintainable, that are extensible. And you would not hate yourself if you looked at the application five years down the line. All right, so getting back to the point, we got to write a simple event handler. It's pretty much like JavaScript. All you need to do is put an at on click method. And you can call this method any, anything you want. So let's call this find my age. And in here, we got to write the event code. So let's create a method. And we have to access whatever value there is in the placeholder. So let's do that. Let's create a variable called my name and bind it to this text box. So bind my name. That's where the my that's where the name will go. Over here we can have a string variable. Now this string variable is bound to this text box. Whenever this text box changes, this variable will change too. And we can test that. We can just print this variable over here and run it we should see the value all right so here we are and let's type in a name and you can see that the name is displayed over here on the change event yep works so let's go on to the next stage and call the api we're going to call the api inside the find my age function but before we do that we need the access to the http client object and all you need to do is put in a directive at the top called inject and just Give it a type, it should be client and client. Now the client object is already populated, already created with the HTTP API and we can test it. So let's do this client dot get async. That's fine. Let's have a message here that says We'll just await it. We're going to get the async information in a response variable, but somehow it's not working. OK, we need to make this method async, of course, and this should work. Now we've got the response here, and we can just assign it to your age, read as string.
this should do the trick before we run the code let's fix the variable name let's make it pascal case in this particular code piece and now let's run the program and see if it works okay so the code is running so let's click this button and see if we get any data i've put in a breakpoint over here it's just a generic call we just want to test the http client so let's just step over yep there is some data over here let's stop her one more time and yep we've got some uh, nice json data in there so we just need to change things a little bit to convert it into an object and then show the actual age in the text box or somewhere now to convert the string json into a dynamic object that we can use to access the data we can use the newtonsoft library and i'm going to install it now so let's just go to package manager console make sure the client type is selected over here and install package okay, that's done and i should be able to access json convert now using that's included at the top deserialize object let's make it into a dynamic and put your age so now this property this object should actually hold the age let's use string interpolation to get the actual name of the person pretty cool i love string interpolation and let's display the age somewhere your age age is your age okay so i probably need to change this and let's see if it's working now type in a name how old am i whoop it's 44 well that's not very far from the actual age so that's not too bad let's try another name okay it's gonna take some time because it's an api call to a third party server so it seems amelia is also 44 let's try alina 29 so pretty cool this is how the app is working it's a complete app it's all working on the fly there is no code written to actually change anything on the interface that's just working out of the box and this was a brief demo of blazor it's not by any means comprehensive but it showed you all the steps that you need to do to create an actual app even this trivial now in the ongoing training that i'm creating around blazor i will be going in depth in a lot of topics i'll be talking about components i'll be talking about apis i'll be talking about dependency injection routing every single thing that you need to do to make sure that you are able to create blazor applications and we're going to focus mainly on blazor WebAssembly because that is my favorite technology in blazor later on of course i will be talking about blazor hybrid too but right now my this series is going to be on blazor WebAssembly. so keep following me hit that like button and subscribe to see more coding videos from Coder Jeet. These are gonna be real world coding videos. I am not a teacher, I am a programmer. I code every day and everything that I bring to you right here is gonna be geared around giving you the value that will help you create actual software.